Did you know that front-sided shoulder pain is the most common injury or symptom of pain that occurs in an athletic population? Now, the causes are anywhere from rotator cuff injuries, bad posture, muscle imbalances, but whatever the case may be, we're gonna get into what to do about it right now. Hey, my name's Coach Josh, and I'm a proud veteran who's had the honor to work with United States Army soldiers, professional roller derby athletes, and everyone in between. And today, I help people think holistically to overcome age, injuries, and the disease of conventional thinking to live their best life. Let's go. When it comes to shoulder pain, a lot of people get fair to pretty terrible advice. Terrible advice such as avoid aggravating movements or don't reach your arm overhead. This is a huge mistake. People don't understand that, they're trying to help, but what the shoulder really needs is not to be babied, not to be uh, coddled, but it needs a little bit of healthy stress. The consequences of avoiding those motions that cause you pain and irritation are twofold. Number one is you, your shoulder just gets stiffer and more useless because you're not doing the thing that you must do, that you need to do to be able to recover your strength and your ability to use your arms and your shoulders. And then you end up just wasting a ton of time doing exercises that literally don't help you at all or do anything positive. The second consequence is you develop downstream elbow, wrist, uh, irritation, tendonitis, and upstream neck tension, you know, shoulder tension, you get a stiff neck, and then you have a painful elbow because you're not actually restoring and repairing the shoulder. Ugh. We don't want either of those things. I call going from immobility to isolation, moving from failure to fiasco, making a bad problem worse through that isolation mechanism. Instead, what we wanna do is we wanna restore blood flow, restore function with dynamic resistance training, gentle at first, maybe even a little bit painful, but something that's useful in restoring balance to your shoulder girdle and restoring strength and, and muscle tone to your whole body. Instead of avoiding pain and discomfort, the warrior moves towards her destiny by integrating motion and strength back into the body, pain and discomfort begin to recede, strength and stability return, and the benefits begin, begin to stack up much more quickly, and that positive, virtuous, reinforcing cycle begins. Try this as soon as you see this video to end your pain, end the cycle of muscle imbalance, and bring forth the warrior within. When it comes to restoring the function of the shoulder, the important things to remember are slow is smooth, smooth is fast. So releasing the pecs and the lats are two important parts of prepping the shoulder for work. We'll do that with a scorpion stretch where we outstretch an arm to the side, squeeze the earth with our active shoulder, push off the earth with the opposite arm to create a little tension, a little counter tension, and basically breathe in that tightened position for around 10 breaths. You'll gradually feel the pecs, the lats, and the obliques relax a little bit, allowing more range of motion and accessibility of the shoulder function. Then we'll move on to the lat stretch from the child's pose, pushing through the earth. When I reach out to one side or the other, I'm gonna be pushing through the pinky of the, of the stretching arm. So my right arm my right lat is stretching and pushing through the floor into the pinky and breathing just like we were doing with the scorpions, almost squeezing the earth with the palm of my hand. Do that for 10 breaths per side. Then move on to the prayer stretch. Uh, in this case, I'll be using a PVC pipe, but anything will do to keep your hands from moving towards one another as you descend towards the earth, trying to bring your head neck and shoulders past the bench towards the floor and providing gentle tension into the bench with your elbows bent to 90 degrees. Again, 10 breaths here works just fine. I'm pulling my rib cage towards my hips to increase the stretch of the lat and the chest. Then moving through shoulder cars, this activity is best done against a wall if you're new 
palm facing your thigh to begin with, thumb up pointing towards the sky as you reach up in a clockwise, like almost like you're trying to brush your arm across all the hands of a clock until you get to the, the noon or the midnight position, tucking the thumb towards the wall, rotating the back of your hand against the wall, sliding that arm down, internally rotating, pushing that thumb towards you as you reach that sort of 45 degree angle behind you and then bringing the hand all the way back to the thigh where you began. And then you can do the same direction a few more times or you can reverse direction, but either way, go slow and allow the shoulder to stretch and mobilize. The stretch push-up is simply uh, in a push-up performed from a 110 to 115% chest stretch. So whether you're kneeling or up on your toes, you'll be able to descend past your hands to increase the range of motion of the pec major and mobilize the scapula on the backside. Again, nice set of 10 here, doing some partial reps to pump up the activation in the pec. The split stance dead stop row is a great shoulder builder, great uh, upper back and bicep builder. So doing this in the split stance helps reduce the asymmetries from your left and right arm. I'm setting the dumbbell down on the ground, pulling that head of the dumbbell into my chest, and then slowly putting it back to set it on the ground again. Looking over your shoulder helps. Uh, the lumbar spine stay stable, but the thoracic spine rotate, which is ultimately what we're trying to encourage here while we strengthen the upper back, rhomboids, lats, rear delts. Then moving into the pull-ups, doing, and in this case, a set of unassisted pull-ups. If you need assistance, you can always use a band, but again, uh, a proper pull-ups performed, chest to bar, keeping one to two seconds on the eccentric phase, chest back to bar. Uh, dips function much in the same way. Here I'm descending down past parallel, My the humerus points towards the ground, stretching, retracting the, the scapula, stretching the chest, really getting the most out of the internal rotation, the anterior deltoid, the pec major, and then pressing up through the tricep, getting all the way back up to the top. And if this is challenging for you, or if this is new for you, using assistance with your foot makes this a whole lot easier, and I highly recommend making it easier and mastering it before you move, move on, move through it. The dumbbell pullover is an amazing tool for stretching the chest and lat while getting a ch chest, lat, and tricep workout. I do these every week to continue to mobilize that thoracic spine and uh, make sure that my upper back doesn't become too stiff. My hips are below the bench, the shoulders are well above the hips. And then as I reach overhead, I'm separating my elbows to enhance the, the tension on the pec. So make sure you keep your elbows apart and your hips down as you drop into the pullover position. So internal rotation is the most common deficit in shoulder function. So we want to make sure that you've got um, a, a, a very strong capacity to internally rotate. Here we're using a cable machine, but a dumbbell against the floor or even a band against a post would work as well. Pulling that hand across the, the midsection of the body, just like you're shutting a sliding glass door. And the goal is to keep the humerus spinning, but not moving in any other direction. So you want to spin spin that elbow, but you don't want to move your shoulder, use your pec, use your uh, deltoids. You want to have it isolated to just that rotation of the humerus. 10 reps on each side is a great place to start, and you can match that pattern with the external rotation version, although most of us will be stronger on external rotation than we are on internal, er, internal rotation. So uh, just check and see what seem, what do you feel like you need more of and focus on the deficit version for you.